What's going on everybody? Evan here with Evan's Detailing and Polishing. Another how-to video. All right, get it out of your system early. Yes, this is a shaft. We will be polishing a shaft today, huh? <laughs> Laugh it up, all right. Now that we got that out of our system, we are polishing a drive shaft out of a Chevy pickup truck today. Um, first thing I want you to do is check this thing over, um, look for tar, um, any kind of um, any kind of scratches, gouges, that kind of stuff. Understand that this metal is thin. You do not need to sand them crazy deep, or you will risk wrecking them. So this one I've inspected already. This one had a lot of tar on it. Um, I used our product, um, it's called Orange Supreme. I sprayed the Orange Supreme on here. I let it sit and soak for about two minutes. You know what, I'm gonna go grab that bottle. Biz Orange Supreme from Time to Shine. Um, I sprayed it on the entire drive shaft and I let it sit and soak and all that tar started to loosen up and all I did was take a cotton terry towel and just let it work in and wiped it all off. Now this shaft is in really good shape. Keep yucking it up, we're gonna have shaft jokes all day here. But uh, this one's in really good shape. So one in this condition, I wouldn't personally sand it. Um, I may change my mind once I start buffing, but we'll make a judgment call as we go along. This one here, I personally don't think is gonna need to sand. I think this one's gonna polish out great. Um, but what I do is I always err on the side of caution. I always decide that Polishing is a lot easier than if I just sand everything. So I'm gonna make a judgment call and you're gonna follow along with me as I do it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our orange buff on a 6,000 RPM grinder and I'm going to start polishing a section of this and see how it turns out. Now, if it's not polishing the way I want to, we may run over and grab some 600 or 400 grit sandpaper and sand this thing. I'm not sure yet. You're gonna learn as I'm learning. Um, but some drive shafts are just really beat up and in order to polish them, you have to polish them. And I revert everybody back to my how to sand and polish aluminum video. For those of you that want to learn how to sand and polish, this one isn't going to be a sanding video because I really don't think it's going to need it. Once I got all the tar removed, this one is in really good condition. It's probably going to polish up really good. Now I will say that some of these drive shafts are grainy. So the ones that are really grainy, you'll have to sand them down to get rid of the grain in the material. So. This one isn't like that. This one's actually in really good shape. So I'm gonna throw my respirator on. I'm gonna take this brown compound here and uh, I'll rearrange the camera so you can watch me polish. Um, but I'm going to use an orange buff with a brown compound first and I'm gonna work small sections. I work about uh, 12 inch to 14 inch sections. And then once I get the whole thing done in one half of the drive shaft, then I grab my yellow and brown and I start walking end to end with the same brown compound. Why do I do that? Because I want to start softening my hash marks. So I will cut the entire thing with orange and brown in small sections, and then I'm gonna walk end to end because I don't wanna work just those small sections. So really pay attention closely to that. Um, it'll actually kinda go pretty quick. These drive shafts that are in good shape polish relatively quickly. So pay attention to that, watch the small sections, and then I'll widen it out into uh, full length on the shaft um, and then once I get done with the yellow and brown I hand polish it really good to get all the excess compound off and then I switch over to our 40 ply um, loose white with our green compound and I'll use that right over the top of the hand polish to give this thing a really nice finish now I use all the products from time to shine products.com um, actually I take that back it's not time to shine products.com it's time to shine products from GoShineOn.com. All the products I use are from Time to Shine Products LLC, and you can find all those on GoShineOn.com. Make sure you edit that part. All right, so let's get down to it. I'm gonna throw my respirator on. I'm gonna put this Orange Supreme away that we use to remove the tar, and uh, I'm gonna start working from well to well. I don't normally polish the end caps where the yolks are. Um, that's a personal preference on my end. 
I really worry about the structural integrity of these things. Um, but that's a personal choice you can make if you want to do them. I always recommend all the guys I do them for to paint them or powder coat the ends. They, to me, it looks cleaner and uh, it holds up a whole lot better. So I'm going to grab my respirator. I'm going to grab a chair so we can get over to this side. I'm going to bring the camera around so you can watch. Come with me. All right, one quick thing I want to point out as we're getting started on this, you can also do this with a 3500 RPM. Um, 3500 will work as well. You don't have to use the 6000 like I do. Um, the only difference with 3500 is you'll move a little slower side to side. You want to make sure that you're letting that buffer build up heat. You don't want to move too fast with the 3500. It won't polish out the way you want to. So. I run 6,000 RPM. This is gonna be an orange buff with brown compound. And here we go. Make sure you always wear respiratory safety. You should also wear ear safety. If I usually wear my earbuds. Um, I have a pair of Beats, uh, the Studio Pros. They're noise canceling. I can't even hear the grinder running when it's running. So for me, that's the better way to be. Um, but earplugs, anything works. I leave them out when I'm doing these videos so that I can pay attention a little better and let you guys hear what's going on as well. But um, here we go. excited when I get down to that end you guys will understand why this drive shaft is polishing out great without sanding it and this thing is going to be a mirror when we're done I can tell already just by looking at it um, if you've watched the previous videos on pressure technique and polishing at 830 to 1030 on your buff watch and pay attention as I change the angle of my buff every time I go around this thing I'm always constantly changing my angle the other thing I'm really very mindful and conscious of is where my cord is at. If I'm buffing up here and my cord catches in that buffer, it's gonna wrap around my arm really quickly and it's gonna hurt a lot. So always be mindful of where your cord is. As you'll see, I'll always be constantly kicking the cord and moving it out of the way. I've been doing this a long time. If you haven't been doing it a long time, stop, remove your cord to where it needs to be so that it's out of your way so it's not gonna get caught in the buffer. Because if it gets caught in the buffer, you're gonna be really sorry. I'm just gonna keep buffing along here and uh, just kind of watch along. This is gonna be a really cool transformation. Um, I'm actually gonna take a picture for this for my Instagram real quick so that uh, you guys will actually go and watch this video.
So just like that, we have the orange and brown done. Now you're probably wondering, why did I break it up into small sections like this? The reason I did that is if I were to put rouge on and go from one end all the way to the other, especially on one that's never been polished before, about halfway my rouge will start to dry out. And this side over here will get polished with less compound than that side will. So you'll actually have a shinier area over here than you will over here. Now you could break it up in half if you wanted to, do half and half, but I always do two multiple cuts. So I do an orange and brown and then I'll come back with either a secondary orange and brown or a yellow and brown. In this case, this one's in really good shape, so I'm going to come back with it now with the yellow and brown. Now you saw I polished from this side going over to that way. Now when I do the yellow and brown, I will go on that side and I will polish from here coming this way. Is there a real rhyme or reason to that? No, not really. I just like to personally polish it both directions. It's a personal preference on my end. It's not something you have to do. You can stay sitting on this side and walk end to end. But now you will notice when I do the yellow and brown, now that there's polish on here and it's covered in compound, now I'm gonna walk from one end or on my chair here, ride from one end to the other. And I'm gonna go the full length. And I'm gonna try to keep my line as straight as possible. Why? Because I want this thing to be as even as possible. Make sure you pressure and overlap correctly because that is one of the more important parts. You can uh, polish it however you want, but at the end of the day, the pressure in your overlap is the part that's going to make the biggest difference. So I'm gonna plug this one in here and I'm gonna crawl over to the other side and uh, I'm gonna keep polishing so you guys can keep watching.
So when I got over here, I realized my line wasn't down as far as I wanted to get. So all I did was hit it with the yellow and brown real quick with a bunch of compound. Now I'm gonna start walking end to end just to clean up some of that excess brown that had come over this way. So now I'm just gonna clean that line up and start working across. yellow and brown as you saw once I got going I was walking in and, and there's a, a, here we go again this is a shiny shaft um, once again this is an aluminum drive shaft out of a Chevy um, steel drive shafts do not polish the same steel drive shafts would polish just like uh, stainless steel they're super hard very difficult to polish um, completely different process this is strictly for aluminum drive shafts now I'm gonna run in the office here grab my sister uh, she's the one that sells all the products. I want to have her come out here and help me rotate this so we can get it out of these jaws and flip it over so we can polish the bottom side before we go ahead and color it. But I'm going to go grab her and uh, I'll be right back. We'll get this thing flipped over. Alright, so now I don't know if you guys are picking this up on the camera here, but now you can see that there's just this last little bit that isn't polished here. I'm just going to blaze through both sides while you guys are watching. I'm going to grab the orange and brown, cut that way real fast. I'm going to grab the yellow and brown and cut back. Um, but as you can see, the drive shaft has been weighted. There's weights on both ends to weight it out, get it, get it balanced. So I'm going to have to buff around those, um, but I'm not as picky about them when I'm cutting as I am when I'm coloring. When I'm coloring, I'll color around them first and then color up to them. Why? Because I don't want to leave a bunch of um, rouge behind me. So I'm just going to cut it real quick, I'm going to secondary cut it, and then uh, we're going to run grab some hand polish, hand polish this entire shaft and start white wheeling it. And white wheel I can actually start the white wheel right at the bottom and wrap it all the way around so I don't have to worry about doing, doing two different directions. I will do two different directions just so that I make sure I get 100% coverage. But other than that, pretty much just watch the rest of this. Here we go.
All right. So now we've got our Time to Shine aluminum polish. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah, there we go. Aluminum polish. Um, I'm just going to put a light coat on here. I just want to get as much of that brown compound off as possible. If you were sitting here looking at this right now, you go, what brown compound? But it's actually in the pores. So I want to clean this up just a little bit. So when I go to put white and green over the top, um, we're putting nothing but either hand polish or color over the top. Um, a lot of the same coloring agents are the same thing that's in this hand polish. So I'm just going to put a light coat on, shake it up really good. Keep shaking until you hear that, that uh, nut or ball bearing in there. Mixing it all together. And it'll separate relatively quickly because we use a very high-end solvent. I put about that much on the pad. And that will do the entire drive shaft. Now, I'm not scrubbing this thing. I'm literally just wiping. I'm not putting a ton on because I don't want a ton to take off. Make sure I get around these weights really good. And now I want to make sure I have the bottom covered too, because when I go, I don't want to try and flip this, because if you go to touch it after you've polished it, you're going to leave fingerprints on it. So I'm going to try and rotate my hands to keep me in a safe position, but I'm going to try to buff the bottom without rotating this thing again, so that it's all done in one fluid mo movement. But we're going to switch out to the 40 ply loose buff. We are going to turn it at about 2200 RPM. Uh, if you're not comfortable running it at 2200, you can turn it down to 1800. 1800 will also leave you a very good finish. Plugging it in. We're going to use green compound on this one. And always check your buff. Feel it. Feel if it's scratchy. If it feels scratchy, give it a rig. This one's not real scratchy, but honestly, I'm just going to give it a really quick rig. Just because I'm working on something this nice, I want to uh, I want to just give it a quick rake so that it's got a fresh edge. Now I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, so I'm just going to hit it real lightly, just like that. Now, when I feel the edge, it's nice and soft. That's all I'm looking for. I see a lot of people raking it super hard and they're throwing fabric all over the place, and it's just kind of crazy. You don't need that much. Just rake it a little bit to break that edge and get it nice and soft again. Respirator on, green rouge on a 40 ply white. Here we go. Now that I have all that hand polish off and I have it about halfway, 
what I like to do is put a little more compound on and just come over it real nice and lightly a second pass and then I'll flip over to that other side and start working it up. But this is looking great already, so we're just going to keep right on rolling. I'm going to throw a little more compound on, hit it with the second pass, and then I'll uh, walk over to the other side and get over there. And it's as simple as that. So I'm gonna bring you guys in, show you really close up how nice and clean and polished this thing turned out. Um, I have one little line on the bottom here, so I'm actually gonna flip my buffer over real quick and do the bottom edge. When I flip it over, I'm gonna make sure that that buffer is pulling away from me, not that it kicks back and hits me in the mouth. Because so I've done that once or twice, it's not great. And that's it. I'll grab this camera and bring you in close. So if you were polishing this drive shaft start to finish, if you had to sand them, carve out about two hours worth of time. If you're just cutting and coloring like this and it's in great shape, 
Carve out about 30 minutes to an hour. Maybe your first time you might take two hours, standing you might take four hours. But once you get experience, these things really don't take all that long. They're relatively simple. Honestly, taking them out is probably the hardest part and polishing it is the second hardest part. For those of you that have been polishing, these things aren't very difficult. The aluminum is really soft. A lot of times you can get away without having to sand them. So, quick recap. I started with orange buff on a 6,000 RPM grinder with brown. And understand, if I didn't have these jaw horses, I would never use a 6,000 RPM grinder. These jaw horses, I have a link for them below. I love these things. Rigid makes a really good one. Jaw horse makes a really good one. I could not run my shop most times to do small parts like this and weird stuff without these jaw horses. These clamps have saved my life a ton of times. So first off, 6,000 RPM with an orange buff and a brown compound. That same brown compound with the yellow buff. And as you start getting your drive shaft nicer, like let's say you're doing this for your own drive shaft, every time you polish it, you do not have to go back to that orange and brown if you maintain it while it stays nice. Now, let's say this guy brings it back in six months and it still looks decent, it doesn't have any big heavy marks in it, I would just hit it again with a yellow and brown and go to the hand polish and the white and green. So after that yellow and brown, we use the Time to Shine Aluminum Polish with a cotton applicator pad. And then after that, we took it off with our 40 ply white and the green rouge. Now, once again, once this thing starts getting really, really nice, you can start using the show compounds to really get this thing looking like it's dipped in chrome. Right now, I can tell from the camera, it doesn't look as nice, but we zoomed in to show you how much nicer it is. This camera really doesn't give polish a good justice. This thing looks amazing in person. The guy that's gonna get this is probably gonna be super stoked. This thing is absolutely beautiful. Compared to what it looked like when it came in, this thing is awesome. So thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate you guys. This video was about how to polish an aluminum drive shaft. Um, if you guys don't mind, if you guys could like and subscribe, that'd be great. Drop a comment below if you made it all the way to the end. I know a lot of you guys watch these all the way to the end and I really, really appreciate you guys. Um, that really helps the algorithm out a lot and helps my channel. Um, so for those of you that made it to the end, drop a comment below. Um, pretty soon here we're going to be doing some videos, giving away some free product and uh, some free swag, some t-shirts, stuff like that. So for those of you that are making it all the way to the end, stay tuned for that because some of you guys that typed that you made it to the end are going to start getting some free swag. I appreciate you guys and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Shine on.